It's the Bougie Podcast. Proudly sponsored by Cimarron Golf Club. What is going on, Pooch Crew? Thank you for being here for episode 91 of the Poochie Podcast. Extremely excited about this episode, as I am for every episode, but specifically this one. We'll be talking baseball. Those that are watching on YouTube can see behind me and my hat, the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp logo. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please go follow on Spotify and Apple to listen to us on the go. If you're listening to us on your preferred podcast streaming platform, please go subscribe on YouTube to watch the cool video elements with all my cool guests. I wouldn't even follow just to watch me. I'd follow to watch our guests. Watch those guys. They're they're pretty cool. Uh, but uh, shout out to our sponsors, String Sports Brewery and Shores Pub Mandarin. They do a great job here in Jacksonville. Staples of the Jacksonville community, especially String Sports Brewery. And when you talk about staples of Jacksonville, you have to talk about the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. So I want to welcome on owner of the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, Ken Babby. Thank you for being here, Ken. Well, it's, it's, it's awesome to, to be here with you and uh, just, uh, just pumped to do this today. Thanks so much for having me. I, I'm pumped as well because we're not just sitting here talking about weathering the pandemic. We're yeah. actually talking about baseball, which... 20 plus months of weathering the pandemic is officially over or at least 95% over Uh, from your standpoint, being the owner of not only one, but two teams, how was it from your shoes kind of weathering the pandemic, getting through for both organizations, the Akron rubber ducks and the Jacksonville jumbo shrimp. It it was certainly the longest off season for, uh, for me that I can ever remember in sports or or for that matter in, in any environment, you know, it was over 605 days since the jumbo shrimp, had last played a game at one to one financial ballpark and to have a chance to do that and, and, and step away as long as we did and miss it and miss our fans, miss our partners. You know, it, it was, it was a very, very challenging time, but I'll tell you, and I think we said this very early on in the podcast, baseball always bounces back. Um, it's bounced back from wars, from terrorist attacks, even from a pandemic in the past. And so here we are, and it was, it was an honor to get back on the field on May 4th, in front of a great crowd and um and and the response has obviously been remarkable from the community we couldn't do what we do without without our amazing our amazing fans yeah it's it's been amazing to watch the growth from 200 person bingo nights 500 person movie nights pods on the field for socially distanced viewing for movies dinners on the diamond so many cool innovative events to kind of bring the community together tying it all back into a 6,000 person opening night or 4,000 person opening night, whatever it was. It's just the growth, the innovation behind it all. And just really applaud to you all of getting it done when it mattered most for this community. You guys were the first uh, organization or really first venue in Jacksonville to open up. So I know a lot of people in town really felt strongly when you guys started on May 4th, including myself. I was really happy to be out there and view it as a fan. So you eased into the events. You you got through the events and we're back to baseball. Team is off to a pretty hot start. One of the best starts since 2013. That's got to be a pretty good feeling. Yeah. So, you know, back as a triple A team too. I and mean, that's something, you know, if there, if there was any silver lining to coming back out of COVID, we didn't just come back uh, you know, as a double A team, we came back as a triple A affiliate of the Miami Marlins. And so, as you know, as you've seen from being out to games, these guys are, are bigger, stronger, uh, you know, um, many of them are on the 40 man roster of the Marlins and that's proven to, to, to be great on the field as well. Some of these guys can, can really, really hit. And so I'm, I've been very excited, sort of enjoying triple A baseball for the very first time, not the first time actually in Jacksonville's history. Um, but, uh, first time for me to be able to see it and, uh, it's been it's been great. And thanks for your kind words about everything that we did during the pandemic. Look, we we see it as our mission to provide, as you know, great, affordable family entertainment uh, to this community. And um, we weren't about to just close up shop and 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 send everybody home, you know, not focused on doing that. And so once we got our sea legs with us and the pandemic started and it became clear we were unlikely to play a jumbo shrimp season in 2020 our focus immediately went to planning events. And when it was all said and done, we planned and worked over 110 events during the pandemic. As you mentioned, some of them, the, the, the bingo nights and the movie nights, we didn't have a baseball season. And so we had to find a way to continue to stay relevant in our community and deliver our mission. And, and the credit to that really just goes to our amazing front office staff that worked long hours every weekend around the clock to, um, 
to keep the business running. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm deeply appreciative of that. Yeah. And not, not only that, not only the events, but you managed to do them in a safe way that made people feel comfortable coming out and hearing the buzz and hearing the reports from it, everyone just enjoying themselves and and having a good time. It was really kind of that breath of fresh air that I think a lot of families need it during tough times, no matter what was happening behind closed doors with their families outside. It was a fun time getting out to the ballpark, seeing fireworks and so on. But you mentioned triple a exciting moving into the triple a, uh, I guess level into the yeah promotion into triple a, I would say from what you're able to kind of say or express, not crossing any lines, how did that process kind of work maybe for those that are casual baseball fans that are maybe curious how affiliates kind of come to be and how the levels break down? Well, you, you raise a, a period that um, was a bit unknown for us, right? So, so minor league baseball, as we knew it, the, the 160 teams had a relationship with major league baseball that goes back, you know, a century. Uh, but every 10 years, every 10 to 15 years, a restructuring of that agreement occurs. And um, in that restructuring, uh, minor league and major league baseball sat down at the negotiating table and really worked through what the parameters of a new agreement would be. There were a lot of issues with facilities that were in tough shape, Um, not an issue in Jacksonville or for our our team in Akron, but there were a lot of facilities where um, it just was not conducive towards professional baseball at the affiliated level anymore. There were very unique travel situations where um, clubs had relationships with uh, major league parents and, and still s- some today that the travel relationships make uh, for very long trips between the triple A or double A team and the major league team. And that's a, an issue that was trying to, that needed to be, uh, to, to, to be resolved. And so when they sat there with the map and they looked at the facilities and they said, where, where, where is the best opportunity for clubs to be? Jacksonville won in that conversation was one of the real few winners in that conversation as the Marlins selected us and our staff and our city to be the AAA affiliate. And so we entered into a 10 year agreement. We signed that just before Thanksgiving. It's a really exciting day. Uh, we've been preparing for that document to arrive and it did. Uh, and, and I'll share with your, uh, with your audience, uh, Justin, that we, uh, we got the news officially through a Zoom call just like this with Derek Jeter. He, he, he scheduled it. I thought it was sort of a spam uh, email. It said, come join Derek Jeter on a Zoom call. Seemed, you know, it seemed like a joke. And Harold Craw, our EVP and GM, we hopped on the call and, and he shared the news. And um, it, it, was, it was just surreal to be, by the way, on a Zoom call with Derek Jeter, by the way. And, and I'm not a Yankee fan. I grew up an Oriole fan, as you know. And um, I'll, I'll share with you that you sit there in the call with Derek and behind him, you know, most people have these virtual backgrounds and pictures of beaches or, you know, uh, you know, uh, fancy places, whatever, their family. And on the background for him were all the gold gloves that he won. But for him, it wasn't a virtual background. He was actually sitting there in front of a shelf with all of the gold gloves behind him and delivering that news to us was just an awesome, awesome moment and something I'll never forget. That's, that's amazing. That's an awesome story. And, and Derek Jeter, just recently, the news broke that ESPN is going to be releasing a six part documentary, which I'm sure some of his post baseball career accolades are going to be a part of that, including the Marlins and what he's done for the Marlins. And don't look now, the Marlins are teetering right around 500 and a pretty yeah. good baseball team, which is why the jumbo shrimp are also a pretty good baseball team as well. It's going to be fun to watch the, uh, the Marlins kind of progress with some of those jumbo shrimp players that those here in Jacksonville get to actually become fans of whether it was Sixto Sanchez, Monte Harrison, Jesus Sanchez is having a great year. So many great guys uh, going to be on that 40 man roster with the Marlins here sooner than later. I mean, that's a, that's a great kind of story taking you through the process, very concise, but very detailed on how that works. And I'm sitting here thinking about it. Were you the, you guys, Jumbo Shrimp, the only double A team that kind of got that promotion, only Southern League team, team that got that promotion up? Only, only Southern League team, only team. I'm just thinking through the rest of the, the dynamic. There were some clubs that moved from AAA down to double A. Um, San Antonio moved down. Yeah, I believe we, you know, and there were some independent teams. The St. Saint Paul Saints that were not affiliated at all became the AAA affiliate of the Twins. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and Sugarland, the uh, Skeeters down in Sugarland became the AAA affiliate, affiliate of the Astros. So a few of those examples that did play out for sure. Yes. 
That's, that's awesome. That's, I mean, that's just a testament to obviously you guys and the city as well, backing the team uh, and being there for support. So how did this, this AAA news kind of impact the city, maybe the organization as far as excitement, buzz around the team at all? You know, I think, and you know, this having grown up in Jacksonville, I think we've long considered ourselves, you know, uh, not only a AAA city, but, uh, you know, dare I say a major league city. And I think We've got an NFL team across the street that's certainly making headways globally, not just, you know, regionally here in Jacksonville. People are super excited about whatever Myers can be able to do. And last I heard, they got a pretty good quarterback as well. Um, and so I think people are really excited about sports in Jacksonville and sort of the evolution of what's happening. On the other side of the street, we've got a world-class arena, the Vistar uh, Veterans Memorial Arena and, and, a, and a hockey team that is actually in at the moment peak uh, position and, and on their way potentially to a playoff drive and the Iceman, great partners of ours and, and, um, and we root for their success. So it's a great time to be a sports fan in Jacksonville right now. We've got a triple a baseball team. We've got an NFL team that people are excited about, you know, and, 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 you know, just a great time to be, to be doing what we're doing coming out of the pandemic. And, and I think the community deserves it. You said it, you hit it right on, on, the, on the, on the nose. We, uh, we, we believe we belong in those lists of conversations. And um, I'm very proud that Jacksonville is now their AAA affiliate. And, and you talk about all those great uh, experiences that one can have down in uh, the sports complex. Being from Jacksonville, like you mentioned, when I was growing up, the only reason you went downtown and went right on Bay Street, no one was going to the Maxwell House. Right. No one was going to the Duro building. You would go to the football game on one you know Sunday, a jumbo uh, Jacksonville Suns game at the time, one day a week, maybe one day a month, who knows that was it. But now yeah. it seems like Jacksonville is evolving into this uh, minor sports mega city with all these great different, like you mentioned with the Iceman and now the Jaguars are, are coming up and jumbo shrimp are doing great things. What's going on around the stadium uh, that you can share that maybe you're excited about as far as what it could mean for the baseball team or for the complex, the sports complex, with maybe more entertainment options for fans and, and uh, families to get to? Well, let's look. It's a good question. So let's look at a macro level of just what's happening nationally. There's a, uh, a, 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 a an enormous influx of people into the state of Florida. And as they're making determinations of where they want to live, as they leave the Northeast, the West Coast, um, you know, they're looking at highly densely populated areas like like Miami and Southwest Florida. And they're saying, you know, I'm not sure that's where we want to call home. And then you look at Jacksonville and you look at sort of this sort of undiscovered, incredible gem, you know, that we all know because we've spent a lot of time here. You've grown up here, but it's a different it's a different type of town. And it's a town that's growing leaps and bounds. You can feel it in the community as as more cities and continued companies try to you know, find ways to move more employees here. We, we see the explosion of, of a company like FIS, multi-billion dollar company that's literally building as we speak, a brand new corporate headquarters downtown um, and, and many other firms and more to come. And so I think we feel we're, we're in a very special city that is sort of, there's a, there's a bit of an urban sprawl in, in, in effect with a lot of the construction downtown. And then, and then you look out towards the beaches and what's happened there. Um, there's a there's an incredible amount of excitement. And so around us specifically um, in the sports complex, what we know a few things is that Shad Khan is making you know great headway on his um, his alternative to Lot J. Uh, and that's the Four Seasons development and project and retail establishments around it. They're going to come back ultimately soon, hopefully, with a game plan to put that into action. And I'm, I'm sure we're likely to see further improvements to the football stadium as that lease expires in only six or seven years. And so I'm pretty bullish on what happens in the sports complex. I'm pretty excited about what's happening around one to one financial ballpark. And, and we're, we're going to be here for a long time. In fact, as I sit here today, um, you know, just last week, we announced a lease extension with the city of Jacksonville through 2043. Um, by then I really will have absolutely no hair left on my head. Uh, and um, at that point, you know, I think it, it's a, it's an awesome opportunity to think about sort of what's the lifespan of a ballpark. 20 years from now, there'll probably be a new ballpark in, in, in 2043. And so we're, we're really excited about that evolution and that, um, that opportunity for the city, but um, we're proud to call one to one financial ballpark home and, and we'll call Jacksonville home for a long, long time. As you should be. It's a great ballpark, beautiful venue. In fact, I remember when I was a bat boy for the Jacksonville Suns, some of the away players 
constantly raved about how much they loved coming to Jacksonville because of the facilities. And at the time, it was maybe five or six years older than some of the newer facilities, and they liked the stadium better than some of the newer facilities, just the way it was built and upkept, which, again, another uh, applaud to you all for, for doing what you do down there and keeping things great. And uh, you mentioned you're an Orioles fan. I also know you're a Capitals fan. Have you had an opportunity at all to get into uh, any of the Stanley Cup playoffs or been a little busy with baseball? But been a little bit busy with baseball, getting our two teams up and running, but you better believe I'll be be tuning in. Um, you know, we, we grew up in Washington, and as you know, just – just rabid caps fans. So stay tuned and uh, look forward to, uh, to, to hopefully another successful uh, Ovechkin playoff run. Yeah. It, they uh, have played two very close games against the Bruins, both into overtime Bruins getting the upper hand in the second game, Washington winning the first game. Uh, I think game three is actually tonight. I want to yeah. say, yep. so if you're listening and it's Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon, game three has already occurred Hopefully, Ken, for your sake, the Capitals won. I'd like to see a happy yeah. Ken. And I know your son's pretty happy with the lightning right now. I yeah, know he's he, a big lightning he is. Fan, so. he, he is. He is. We don't even know how that happened, but we'll, we'll blame you for that. Yeah. It, hey, it could be my fault, but he should be happy with it. He's a fan. They won a championship. He had to wait a lot less time to see his team win a championship. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But anyway, Ken, hey, I appreciate you being here. I, uh, I'm i really excited for this season, the 2021 season. I'm just excited for sports in general and to be back at the ballpark for uh, some fun fireworks nights, maybe some thirsty Thursdays. And I'll, of course, always be on the lookout to see you out there, maybe even throwing some T-shirts somewhere along the base path. So I appreciate you being here. Can't wait to have you back, Justin, and uh, continued success with the podcast. I'm a huge fan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. Take care. How can I be the man when you're the man? How can I be the man when you're the man? How can I be the man when you're the man?